good morning students and welcome back to your online class of computer science this is our second class of chapter number 1 let's continue with our chapter number 1 from where we left in our first lecture we discussed about the first two generations of computer that were composed of uh, transistors and vacuum tubes today we will talk about the rest three generations of computers and see what basic component they composed of and what are their characteristics including their advantages and disadvantages so dear all here comes the third generation of computer which took place in 1964 and existed till 1971 As we all know that first generation of computers used vacuum tubes and then they were replaced by the second generation of computers which used transistors but these two were not sufficient therefore a third generation of computer introduced and these were built on the integrated circuits an integrated some circuit is sometimes called a chip or microchip it is a semiconductor wafer on which thousands or millions of tiny resistors capacitors and transistors are fabricated an ic can function as an amplifier oscillator timer counter computer memory or a microprocessor a particular ic is categorized as either linear analog or digital depending on its intended application Here are few of the characteristics that the third generation of computers hold. We have already talked about that they used integrated circuits and transistors were miniatured and placed on silicon chips which were known as semiconductors. These increased the speed and efficiency of computers. Instead of punched cards and printouts, user interacted through keyboards and monitors and interfaced with an operating system. which allowed the device to run many different applications at one time with a central program that monitored the memory computers for the first time became accessible to a mass audience because they were smaller and cheaper and their predecessors here are few of the advantages and disadvantages of third generation of computers let's have a look at the advantages first So the first advantage was that they were smaller in size. If you remember the first generation of computers they were very huge in size. Literally they could consume a room space and they generated a lot of heat. So compare comparatively to the first generation of computers and the second generation of computers the third generation of computers are smaller in size. They are more reliable. they use less energy and therefore produce less amount of heat they have a better speed and could calculate data in nanoseconds they used fan for heat discharge to prevent the damage maintenance cost was also very low they were totally the general purpose systems and could used be for the high level languages they had good storage versatile to an extent very less expensive they have better accuracy rate they were used on the commercial production as well and it used mouse and keyboard for giving the input whereas the disadvantage was air conditioning was still the need and they highly suffocated technology required for the manufacturing of ic chips now let's discuss the next generation of computers This is known as the fourth generation of computers and it took place in 1971 and exists in today's world as well. As we all remember that each generation was replaced by a very special and a main component of it. Fourth generation of computers were replaced by microprocessors. What is a microprocessor? A microprocessor is the most important unit within a computer system and is responsible for processing the unique set of instructions and processes. A microprocessor is designed to execute logical and computational tasks with typical operations such as addition, subtraction, interprocesses and device communication, input or output management, etc. This is how a microprocessor of Intel looks like. 
Now let's talk about the features of fourth generation of computers. What in the first generation felt an entire room could now fit in the palm of the hand? Of course, the size of the computers of this generation were decreased a lot. In 1981, IBM introduced its first computer for the home user and in 1984, Apple introduced the Macintosh. As these small computers became more powerful, they could be linked together to form networks which eventually led to the development of the internet. Four generation computers also saw the development of graphical user interfaces, the mouse and handheld devices. The microprocessor brought the fourth generation of computers as thousands of integrated circuits were built onto a single silicon chip. The Intel 404 chip was developed in 1971 and located all the components of the computer. From the central processing unit and memory to input or output controls on a single chip. Fourth generation computers also saw the development of graphical user interfaces, the mouse and handheld devices. Now let's talk about the advantages of fourth generation of computer along with disadvantages. So these computers are more powerful and reliable. They are smaller in size. They have a fast processing power with less power consumption. The fan for heat discharging and thus to keep it cold so that it does not generate a huge amount of heat. No air conditioning required so it saved a lot of energy as well. It was used for total general purpose, commercial production. They dissipated less need of repairing. Cheap among all generations. All types of high-level languages can be used in this type of computers as you all remember that high-level languages are those languages that are understandable by the computer and the human beings too. Now the disadvantage that it takes with is that the latest technology is required for manufacturing of microprocessors.